Thank you so much, sir, for this kind introduction. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rutul and Dr. Banshi Sabu for the invite and uh, congratulations to Dr. Rutul for having this vision, you know, having this fifth PhD post pandemic. It really matters, you know, uh, updating all of us continuously in last five years. So when the topic was allotted to me, there is nothing much. There is no chapter in any GDM book on classification of uh, hyperglycemia in pregnancy. I uh, searched a lot. Uh, there are not many slides on the theory because there is just one slide on classification of uh, hyperglycemia in pregnancy. But why are we so much interested and why there are 50, why there is 15 minute session kept in this uh, conference? Because we really want to classify the patient whenever a patient walks in our cabin, he always comes with some OGTD report fasting post lunch report and there is not much of past history available then uh, sometimes hb1c report is also not available and we really want to point out what kind of patient uh, you know patient has this does that patient just has gdm some blanket statement and we are not very sure how to manage this patient so let's just go to this one slide which is very very important how does uh, 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 hyperglycemia affects you know these are maternal anemia maternal malnutrition these are the uh, uh, comorbidities which affect uh, mother and child but nowadays yeah we know that we all are fa facing tsunami of uh, you know gestational diabetes in india so this is very important slide simple slide there is nothing called as only gdm in uh, pregnancy and diabetes whenever we are looking at any pregnant woman we are going to uh, differentiate this. Why are we talking so much about uh, hyperglycemia in pregnancy? And typically this term diabetes in pregnancy, most of the time because of now the you know increased uh, burden of type 2 diabetes and increased uh, age at the conception, what is happening is we are detecting most of the time this pre-diabetic and diabetic undiagnosed uh, women who are many times elderly and we are just labeling them as GDM. So they are probably not GDM. Why is this happening? Because many times we are not doing uh, fasting post lunch or OGDT or HB1C in the first trimester. We are still, all of us, many of us are following that the OGDT should be done in 24 weeks onwards. So this is absolutely wrong. Dipsy recommends that any pregnant Indian woman you have to do OGTT, one step OGTT at the time of diagnosis that whenever your UPT is positive, you have to do uh, one OGTT or some sugar evaluation. So now we are going to divide. What is gestational diabetes? Gestational diabetes is a pregnant woman who never had diabetes, but who has high blood sugar levels during pregnancy. And this may be transient, this may continue whatever postpartum follow-up is very very important and what is diabetes in pregnancy now this is different entity altogether in hyperglycemia in pregnancy that pregnancy detected prior to pregnancy if woman walks in and she says yeah kabhi to mera sugar jada aya tha. sometimes patient comes to you she's already on ohs we are confused uh, upt is positive so this patient can be uh, uh, comes under this uh, section type 1 diabetes who becomes pregnant she comes under this diabetes in pregnancy heading and diabetes first time detected during pregnancy. And that is most of the time over hyperglycemia. That is not borderline sugars, over hyperglycemia with some HbA1c on the higher side. So we have to know this classification. Why very clearly? Because we have to manage this lady for next nine months or four months if she is detected later course of uh, pregnancy. If she's just GDM, most of the time, we don't have to be very over aggressive in just starting medical, uh, just uh, starting pharmacotherapy or insulin. Give a trial. If the OGTT levels are not very much on the higher side, we, let's just, uh, you know, go to the cases as well. Because I called up Dr. Rutul and asked him, what are the expectations? What should I speak in classification? So he just said that get some cases, that's all. So let's go into the history. That in 1957, Carrington coined the term gestational diabetes, and since then there is always controversy: how much degree of hyperglycemia, and what is the first time you have to label whether it is first term after 24 weeks during pregnancy. There is always confusion. So in 2010, uh, IID PhD introduced a new term called over diabetes. So probably this over diabetes is 
patients who were already diabetic and getting diagnosed during 24 weeks because in 2010 there was no concept of doing any OGDD in the first, uh, first uh, term of the pregnancy. Then later on the criteria evolved and, and during this period there were, there were a lot of you know missing of uh, uh, hyperglycemia in pregnancy, gestational diabetes. In 2016, IDPSG stated that evidence did not justify the use of fasting plasma glucose equal to or more than 5.1 minimum. I'm sorry, these are the international cells, so around 90 for the identification of gestational diabetes in early pregnancy. So there were insufficient data to recommend that cutoff for oral glucose tolerance testing in early pregnancy. The cutoffs cannot be same for the first trimester and the second and the third trimester. This was the uh, you know, finding in 2016. WHO endorsed in 2013 the classification which was uh, <coughs> the IID PhD criteria. Now let's see what, what is our Bible saying. That is ADA defines gestational diabetes as diabetes diagnosed in second or third trimester of pregnancy that was not clearly over diabetes prior to gestation, very clearly. Women who are tested during first trimester and meet the standard diagnostic criteria of diabetes can be diagnosed as pre-existing or pre-gestational diabetes. I'm sorry, the slides are little theoretical, but you know, there are a lot of interesting points, but a lot of overlapping between the guidelines. So let me just, so the recommendations by these three major organizations are not very uniform. So we are also always confused about screening and classification. For screening also there is so much confusion, 50 gram, 75 gram, 100 gram, how many steps, one step, two step procedure or three step procedure. So we have to be very, very clear about it. And this confusion mainly arises in the subgroups of women who have values which are not very much elevated, but they do not meet the threshold for overt or pre-existing uh, glycemia. So just small cutoff above 140 post glucose or fasting also you know, little bit rise in the sugar. There is a confusion in classification. So. Needless to say, the absence of definitive diagnosis or no concrete recommendation for management can be followed on the basis of just diagnostic criteria. And preconception uh, glycemic profile, it basically, so bato ki ek bar, that preconception or pre diabetes and diabetes has to be uh, diagnosed in the first week of. Uh, uh, you know, conception because many of these guidelines still don't recommend doing OGTT in first trimester. That is the you know, crux of everything. So, uh, I want you, I just showed you the you know, table gestational diabetes or diabetes in pregnancy. So, let's just see whether this patient comes as a gestational diabetic or diabetes in pregnancy. So, this female, 32 year old female, primary. 29 weeks of amenorrhea, she is not a known case of diabetes. If you look at her sugar, the laboratory person has followed the ADA criteria post glucose sugar at um, 2 hours is showing 164, minimal uh, hyperglycemia. Afterwards, HbA1c turned out to be 5.0. Fasting, this is not post glucose, fasting 95 and post meal is 108. So this patient comes in diabetes in pregnancy or gestational diabetes? Gestational diabetes, right. So this patient can be given lifestyle modification trial without just blind, uh, you know, blindly starting metformin for this patient. Forget about insulin, but I think we can wait for two weeks. And believe me, all of us know that pregnant diabetic patient is the most diabetic, motivated diabetic patient still delivery. So this is the patient who can and she really did well on only lifestyle modification and continued lifestyle modification till delivery. Now this patient, she, uh, pre super precious baby, elderly priming, IVF treatment plus, uh, you know, uh, IVF treatment and uh, no family history of diabetes, but of course some hormones were given and if you see her uh, weight around 62, fasting 86, post meal sugar was 208, okay. HbA1c around 5.9 and if you see her uh, post glucose load, somehow the post glucose load is not overtly high. One hour sugar was 196, cutoff is 180, but 5.9 HbA1c. What what do you uh, get out of it? 5.9 HbA1c and post prandial around 208, not a known case of diabetes. Right? 
so it has to be gestational diabetes. I, I, according to me, the OGDT was done very much late, at 20 weeks. I think IVF patient doing OGTT at 20, 20 weeks is very much late. So take home from this patient should be, her HbA1c should have been done in the first trimester and OGTT also should have been done in the first trimester. This is her first OGTT. So we have missed that you know, she shouldn't have crossed 5.9. Okay. Now case 3, uh, 6 weeks on amenorrhea, very uh, early uh, pregnancy, priming. No, family history of diabetes, weight on the higher side and HB1C straight away 8.2. She's coming to us with fasting 219 triple 2. What is the diagnosis? Pre-existing type 2 diabetes which is getting diagnosed because of early detection of, uh, you know, hyperglycemia in first trimester because Gynac bothered to do her OGTD in the first week. Okay? So, like along, the, you have to be very careful. <coughs> insulin straight away, but along with lifestyle modification, metformin, insulin, or in the first visit itself. Now, this patient new, newly diagnosed diabetes with uh, six weeks of amenorrhea, one child already. She has one child, family history of diabetes, and she has uh, she she didn't have diabetes in the previous pregnancy. First pregnancy was normal. Now she was on steroid. Gynec knew she was on steroids for last two months and uh, sugars were not done but still six weeks after she got pregnant this pregnancy was not planned so whenever patient is on steroid non-diabetic patient on steroid i think sugar should be evaluated before she plans for pregnancy this is very very important and look at the hba1c 11.4 she straight away goes for termination now this patient diabetic since 10 years look at her weight around 112 Conceived after IVF, super, super uh, precious pregnancy, 47 year old, diabetic. But she's been planning her pregnancy since last five years. She was 128 kg, she has lost about 16 kilograms, uh, 16 kgs. And fasting 97, PP 139 and HbA1c 7.2 and now on IVF. So she is hyper diabetes in pregnancy, type 2 diabetic patient who has planned her pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And pregnancy is really going bad. She is now around 7 to 8 months of pregnancy. But everything was planned and she was trying for pregnancy. And she at 1.2 kg, she, tried, she could achieve 7.2 only on insulin, metformin and lifestyle modification. Uh, 45 year old patient. Three weeks amenorrhea, type 2 patient. I don't have to go into much detail. This is diabetes in pregnancy group, not GDM group. Everybody knows that. Type 1 diabetes, known diabetes. She planned her pregnancy. Still A1C on the higher side, 7.2. She comes to us with three, man three months of amenorrhea, but she's diabetic since last, I think, 20 years. So 7.2 is also good for her. She is again diabetes in pregnancy. We can't label her as gestational diabetes. Five months amenorrhea, unplanned pregnancy, HbA1c 9.0, and uh, known case of type 1 diabetes on insulin 9.0. We really have to give a thought whether you want to continue this pregnancy. Mm. Now this patient very interesting case. She had first normal baby. She was GDM. Second time she didn't plan. Okay, she had IUFD at nine months. Okay, she's clearly a uh, diabetes in pregnancy patient. But we really need to classify these patients because these are the patients, you know, she's coming to us uh, after one IUFD, she's coming to us with 263, 239, 8.1. So that is the reason we really need to plan, plan and classify the pregnancy. Time your OGTT, very, very important to HbA1c simultaneously. So along with your classification, doing all these things are very, very important. So we all know, I mean, Rutul has told me not to mention this because there are uh, separate lectures on uh, screening. So in short, classification, diagnosis, treatment, the burden is too huge and efforts are too little. And uh, we all need to unite and fight against this uh, gestational diabetes tsunami. And this is a small uh, gestational diabetes support group where we go to grassroots level because you really want to prevent gestational diabetes in the society you need to educate girls who are between 7th standard to 10th standard so that don't, they don't go into PCOD, they don't have too much of insulin resistance and they don't develop into GDM. Thank you so much.